Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you very much for tuning in. Seven Deadly Snares may be the only piece of software that you ever need to buy to take care of all of your snare needs for making electronic music. It's beautifully designed, it's quick, easy and fun to use. It has seven engines, each of which have three different voicings that you can very easily morph between. As you can tell, I'm loving it. But you may be thinking to yourself, why would I want to spend money on a piece of software that just takes care of one component part of the drum kit when I could spend money on a piece of software that gives me a whole drum kit worth of sounds. Well, I'm going to give you my thoughts on that a bit later in the video, but for now, let's jump straight in and have a look at how it works. Here's engine number one. This is Sloth, which is based on a classic analog groove box, and as New Tricks the Synth Guy pointed out in his Seven Deadly Snares video, it does sound quite Rolandy. I can choose between two different source sounds up here. And down in the morph window, you'll see that I can move between three versions of this engine by moving into the three different corners of this shape. Or I can blend between the three versions of the engine somewhere in the middle. Here, labeled A, B, C, and D, we have four macro controls. For each engine, they will do something different, like in sloth, A will change the FM amount, B, brightness of the transient, C is decay brightness, and D is tone. I can switch between the engines by moving to any side of the hexagon and clicking on the highlighted shape that appears. As you'll see, all the engines are color coded meaning it's easier to switch to a specific module by clicking on the color-coded small hexagons down here. This is gluttony, which is for ambient and real-world sounds based on Foley samples. If I let the mouse settle over any of the knobs, a little description will pop up telling you what it does, meaning you really don't need to RTFM. This micro, for instance, now has a picture of a little dice in it, and the more we turn it up, the more it will introduce a slight noise change with every hit. Once you've learned the controls, you can switch off the tooltips by going to the cogwheel up here, where you can also see what version you're on, manage your license, and switch off animations, and link to Beat Surfing's website. Note, as I switch between engines, all parameters will remain set. So, you can experiment with moving to a different engine, but if you decide to return to the same one, nothing has changed. Up here, I can toggle through presets, or click here and choose from a list. This is RAF for boom bap style snares. Let's use this macro to bring up the transient brightness. And let's switch to Sound Source 1 and have a play with the morph. This is Lust for watery type snares, where the macros will give us a filter, a water type, whether it's river or puddle or whatever, the amount of water droplets after the main hit, and random differences to every hit. Other than the macros, all the other controls have the same function in every engine. We can colorize the sound source here, labeled noise seed. Watch the graphic here and adjust noise speed. Let's jump over to Envy, a noise based engine, and let's play around with the tuning. We can adjust pitch and semitones here. And fine tune here. Double click to center, and here is a tone knob. Let's have a play 
with the length and impact controls. The Q will widen or narrow frequency range. And fire increases saturation. Greed is the most musical engine. Let's grab a user preset I saved. I'll stop Cubase 12 Pro from looping around this MIDI and I'll play my MIDI controller. You can hear the different pitches there, but if I switch off tracking, it doesn't matter which note I play, they are all the same. Switch tracking back on. Velocity sensitivity will compress the input velocity's dynamic range. This macro will introduce some reverb. This one, reverb time. Now I'm going to switch over to Pride, engine number seven, the noisiest and dirtiest one. Now here's a feature I know a lot of my friends and patrons are really going to like. The random button. Let's pull the deviation control all the way up, press random and we get a completely random sound generated. When we get something close to what we want, we can lower the deviation control and press again for something slightly different but not too far away from the current parameters. Also, let's just bring this back up. If we press random and get something we like, but then press it again, but wish that we hadn't, we can undo and undo again, over and over again. I don't actually know what the limit is, but it does supply a quite extensive amount of stupid old hippie proofing. Oh, and master volume is here and output meter. When I reach the mixing stage of one of my tracks, I like to have each and every individual component part of a drum kit on a separate track. I want total control over how each drum and each cymbal is processed, and only then do I feel I'm actually ready to mix. I would never use a drum loop. To me, a drum loop has already been mixed by someone else, so I don't have control and that just doesn't work for me. If I'm using the kind of drum software that doesn't have multiple outs, then at some point or another through one process or another, I'm going to need to export each individual drum onto its own track. I'm using multiple softwares to achieve the electronic drum sounds that, that I'm getting. Acoustic drums, slightly different thing, different video. But for electronic drums specifically, I'm using a number of different drum softwares to achieve the full picture, if you like. So for me, the fact that Seven Deadly Snares just deals with snares that's fine. In fact, it's kind of ideal. If you'd like to see a video, by the way, where I show my process and, and the softwares uh, that I'm using to achieve the drum sounds that I'm getting, then comment below this video. I'll show you all the mixing process, the effects I'm using, etc, etc. Comment below the video. Let me know if that's a video you want to see. I'd be happy to make it. So my conclusion about Seven Deadly Snares it's a bit boring really, I have nothing critical to say whatsoever, I've had no crashes, no bugs, no glitches, it was easy to get into, very easy to understand, just it's completely suck free. And I know that's like poor YouTubing, I'm supposed to find something to complain about, but I, I've tried, I just cannot. So if this video was any good to you, if it was useful at all, then please do give me a thumb up subscribe if you haven't done already, and ding my bell if you'd like to be notified of further nonsense from this stupid old hippie. If you'd like to help out the channel, there's lots of links down below the video, my music, my merchandise, website, Patreon, all that typical YouTuber stuff. Until the next video, take care of yourselves, be good people, make lots of music, be kind, look after the planet, and don't pissy pants about. See you later.